everyone. Thank you for joining us online here at Destiny. If you haven't had a chance to visit our campus, we would love for you to come out to either our 9.30 or 11.30 service on Sunday. But if you can't, you can always watch us online here at destinyokc.com. And while you're there, you can look up any past messages, see any of our upcoming events, and read pastor's blogs. Also, be sure to follow us on social media right here. And now, here's this week's message. Whenever I have a message that I feel like really goes deep, I put it in a folder in my computer called My Greatest Messages. Words that God's given me that I feel like are really significant. I'm just going to announce to you, this message goes in that folder before I speak it. I've never done that before. I always wait till afterward. Uh, but I have heard the Lord with such clarity. I'm just speaking it in an attitude of faith and stirring up your expectation. I believe God is about to do something profound in our hearts and in our lives. Will you agree for that? So Lord, we just stir ourselves to do more than go to church. Jesus didn't die so we could merely go to church. You want us to be awakened within our hearts to become more of the men and women that you've called us to be, silencing the voice of the accuser of the brethren. The devil's voice is silenced in our lives today. Thank you, Lord. You're helping us have a greater understanding of how to walk this out. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You are fully known. You are fully loved. I want you to write in your first blank on your handout. It's such an important statement that we're focusing on in this season. He who knows you the best loves you the most. If you can understand this, it will completely change your life. He who knows you the best loves you the most. He fully sees you, he fully knows you, and he still fully loves you. Isn't that great news? Like this is the good news of the gospel. It's always good news. Now, I want us to see from 1 John chapter 3, again, we take it a little bit different approach as we're listening and learning what God's wanting us to do as a congregational family. And instead of just spraying multiple verses in many directions to get a point across, we're really settling into portions of Scripture for seasons of time. And I feel the Lord wants to enrich us in that regard. So we're, we're still looking at 1 John chapter 3. We're going to read all these verses and just take our time through them and let the power of God's Word really take hold. Starting verse 16. Again, the famous John 3.16 is about how God loved us and gave himself. 1 John 3.16 is about how God loved us, gave himself, and then we're to give ourselves. So 1 John 3.16, I want to leave that verse in your mind out of the season that you'll never, ever forget. 1 John chapter 3, starting with verse 16. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Something about this is very significant about our confidence before God. And I really want to instill that in you today. I believe God's about to do so. Verse 20, even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. Don't let your feelings be greater than God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And He knows everything. He knows us. 100%. Verse 21, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. And we receive from Him whatever we ask because we obey Him and do the things that please Him. And this is His commandment. This is what I want us to understand today. It's been a little convoluted as we just read it through, but I want you to think about what we're reading. This is His commandment. What's His commandment? This is it. Believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as He commanded. Those who obey God's commands remain in fellowship with Him, and He with them, and we know He lives in us because the Spirit He gave us lives in us. Such a powerful portion of Scripture. We really need to deepen our love and appreciation for God's Word and not just race through our devotions, but pause. You have to pause to catch the fire before you try to burn. Take your time in the presence of the Lord. 
It's what I'm doing right now. Instead of just racing into a message, I want to make sure we're giving time and space for the Spirit of God and the Word of God and what He desires to do. Coming to pre- into the presence of God with complete and total confidence. So I want you to think about this question, and I want you to answer it. I'm going I'm to call on you to answer. Everybody's going to give an answer. How pleased is God with you right now? How pleased is God? It just strikes deep, doesn't it? Immediately. Like, what, where have I been? What have I been doing? How pleased is God with you right now? And so this is like God's not very pleased. You know, I've, I've not done well. And then this is like God's totally pleased. Like, I'm amazing. Okay? So somewhere in here or here, so go ahead and give me your, your left hand. We're going to do this with our left hand. Put your, put your score right out there. Show me. All right, different, different places I'm seeing. Okay, now you can put that left hand down. Now I'm going to ask your right hand. How pleased is God with Jesus? Go ahead, let me see. Now I want you to think about this. Just hold it there for just a moment. A little calisthenics with the body of Christ. Here, this is how pleased God is with Jesus. And when God looks at you, he doesn't see what you did. He sees what Jesus did. So you need to understand, you're here. Wherever you were, you're here. And I want to challenge you to understand, from this day forward, every time you worship, I want you to worship understanding, Jesus is here, therefore I am here. This is why my hands are here. I am going to worship my God and celebrate that I am fully known, I am fully loved, not because of what I did, but because of what He did. His name is Jesus, and because of what He did, you are fully loved by God. You are fully 100% known and loved by God. It changes everything for you to get what I'm saying. And the enemy will do anything to keep you from getting what I'm talking about today. But I silence the voice of the accuser today in Jesus' mighty name. Layers are being peeled back, and God is going deep in the soft portion of our heart to awaken something. He didn't give you a a heart of stone, but a heart of flesh upon which he pours out his spirit to awaken something powerful and profound within your life. Mighty men and women of God, rise up in the grace and strength and confidence of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we don't feel guilty, did you catch it? If we don't feel guilty, how pleasing am I? Well, I mean, I don't know. No, if we don't feel guilty, it doesn't say if you're not guilty. It doesn't say if you haven't made mistakes. I know what it is to make mistakes. How many of you have blown it recently? We all raise our hands. How many of you blow it often? We all raise our hands. How many blow it so often you had a blowout? We all raise our hands. But he's a God who doesn't look at what you did. He's a God that looks at what Jesus did when he sees you. When you look in the mirror, you think about what you have done. When he looks in your face, he thinks about what Jesus did. That changes everything. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not religious Phariseeism where you have to obey certain portions of the law to gain greater favor with God. I believe in fasting and praying. I purpose every week to fast and pray where I miss meals because I'm hungry for something deeper than the appetite of the world. But God doesn't love me any more when I fast or any less when I don't. I'm glad you're here at church, and I hope you'll be faithful. And I hope you'll be faithful in your giving, and I hope we'll leave the world a better place. But the person who attends church more often than somebody who doesn't is not finding more favor with God. The person who writes a big check is not finding more favor with God. Do not be confused about this very important issue. We live in a day where the church world, unfortunately, and I repent for this on behalf of all church leaders, but there are so many church leaders that are manipulating people to accomplish their agenda because it's easy to mess with your shame and your guilt that exists in your life. We won't do that here. There are two different times, amen, there are two different times in the Bible where Jesus marveled at somebody's faith. I want to break this down and give you an understanding of something today. If you go to our our website, you can read all of this on the blog. I don't think I have much of it on your handout. 
but it's all broken down for you to read because I'm going to make reference to it. I'm not going to teach through it this morning. I want to get to a, a further deeper point with this as our frame of reference. Holy Spirit, I believe that you're deeply at work in all of our lives right now, extracting some roots of shame and guilt and even bitterness as a result of not understanding who we truly are before our God. Do a deep work in us, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Two times in Scripture. I only find it twice. Jesus marveled at someone's faith. I was reading the book of Matthew, and I... I read through into Matthew 8, and I found this centurion Roman soldier, an overseer of soldiers, and Jesus marveled at his faith. I didn't think that much about it until I read further into Matthew. I found in Matthew 15 where the Canaanite woman who identified herself as the Jews would identify her as a dog. And she had such faith, Jesus marveled at her faith. So here are two people, Jesus marveled at their faith. So I start thinking to myself, all right, if there are two people in the Bible, that we, only two we read about that actually caused Jesus to stop and say, I have not seen faith like this, then I want to know what they have in common that I might understand something about why this was so impressive to Jesus. Here's what they have in common. Are you ready for this? It might surprise you. They were both Gentiles, and neither of them had a deep understanding of the law. Hmm. Great faith, both Gentiles, neither had a deep understanding of the law. So what we read in Scripture in Romans chapter 7 is that, and again, the blog has all these references. You can study that this week and look into it deeper. But, but just for frame of reference here, in Romans 7, what we see is that the law didn't come to make us righteous. The law to came us what? Make us what? Aware of our sin. You familiar with this portion of Scripture? The law makes us fully aware of our sin so that we understand our need for a Savior. Here were two Gentiles who had not studied and been under the weight of the law, so they had not come to a great awareness of their sin, like perhaps the Pharisees or or Jews, Messianic even, uh, as people who were coming to know Christ. These were the two that, that Jesus marveled at their face. So the law, Romans 7, makes us aware of our sin, but Titus 2, grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness. The law makes us aware of sin, but grace wakes us up to the truth and life of Christ. Now, this is powerful because where I'm driving you with all of this is that you understand the two people with exceptional faith that that captured the attention of Jesus, they were not consciously aware and constantly rehearsing their sin, but they were consciously aware and constantly rehearsing their God. Mm. They were not consciously aware and rehearsing their mistakes, How many of you in here are guilty as charged? I mean, do I even need to go any further? How many of you have just been rehearsing your mistakes over and over and over and over? Is that faith? They were not constantly aware and rehearsing their mistakes. They were constantly aware and rehearsing the presence of Jesus. Have you ever seen, how many dog owners are in here? Can I just see you raise your hand, dog owners? Have you ever seen when the master comes home and the dog is so happy? How many of you have crazy happy dogs when you get home, especially on vacation? And they're like, whoop, whoop, you know, look, we, we got a dog that has emotional disorders. And I mean, he goes totally nuts, like for real. And so, you know, we come home, he's so excited. But if you go into the room where the dog chewed up the shoe, all the happiness drains out. And all of a sudden that dog is in the corner full of guilt and shame. Huh? ¿Quién de los dos fue? ¿Quién hizo esto? Quiero saber. Mira cómo me dejaron la plantilla. ¿Quién fue? ¿Eh? All right. Well, apparently while I was out, somebody got into the kitty cat treats. Denver, did you do this? 
Denver, was this you? Denver, you won't look at me. Did you? What? Denver, did you do this? Cooper, did you eat all of your treats? <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> The dog is so happy to see the master until the dog is face to face with the mistake. And the enemy is right there to pick up the shoe and hold it in the face when we've made a mistake, to try and shame us away. From, but the master walks in and says, no, because of what Jesus did, you have full 100% favor with me. Don't let the enemy do that to you. Don't let the enemy do that to you. All of that to give you framework and context for me to give you this very significant verse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, here it is, Gentile Jew, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through, say the word, love. Faith works through love. Let's say that together. Faith works through love. How many of you believe the enemy wants to keep you out of the context of God's love so that you never discover true faith and you embrace some type of hijacked version that isn't even what God has prepared, provided the way for you to be able to possess. Faith works through love. See, the absence of love is enemy territory. The absence of love is enemy territory. Look what you did. The absence of love is enemy territory. How do you think this makes God feel about you? Come on. Come on. Yeah. From now on. From now on. 100% favor with God. Faith works through love. God's love awakens something in you so that you can conquer how you feel about coming into God's presence. And if you'll not feel guilty, you'll come into His presence boldly. Is anybody hearing this? See, let me tell you how it works. And it's, it's not a good thing the way this, this happens in our lives. But we've got this running in the background in our brains. And then we find ourselves suddenly having a symptom. Jesus said, don't fear and don't worry. And the first thing we do is fear and worry. And then we pray. Anybody ever Google a symptom and find the 39 ways you might die in five weeks? When prayer is driven by fear, we look for a change, and if we don't see the change we were looking for and praying for, love gets dismissed, we get reduced to people lacking intimacy with God, questioning, does He even love us? Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it again. When prayer is driven by fear, we pray and look for change. If we don't see the change we were praying for, we dismiss love. Then we are reduced to people driven by a problem who lack intimacy with God. And because faith works through love, in the absence of love, we possess the absence of faith. And we need not to turn away from God. We need to press into God and thank Him for His love for us no matter what we may be facing. I don't understand why we go through the things we go through. I don't understand why circumstances and difficulty has to come our way. And it does, doesn't it? How many of you have had some non-understandable circumstances and situations that have happened to you before? And many times those happen, and what do we do? We start questioning, well, what I do wrong? Does God love me? <laughs> he loves Jesus this much. He loves me because of what Jesus did. Therefore, I'm going to just pause and reflect on the love of God in my life 
rehearse. I'm not going to get into fear and symptomatic reaction. I'm just going to rehearse the love of God. No matter what comes my way, I'm just going to thank God for his love. I'm going to thank God that he is with me. I am going to thank God for his strength, his life, his love, his power, his anointing. I am going to worship my God no matter what situation may come my way because I am fully known and I am fully loved by God Almighty. We live in a fallen world. Stop trying to make sense of everything that you're walking through or you're facing. We live in a fallen world. Do not forget, though we live in a fallen world, we still serve a risen king. I am not going to abandon what I know about God because of what I don't understand about a situation at hand. I will rehearse what I know about my God and walk in a greater source of strength. Because if you don't do that, you'll start coming from a place of wrong, conflu- con- uh, wrong conclusions. Well, I chewed up the master's shoe. I've lost favor with God or, or my, my breakthrough would be here. Are you praying to have breakthrough or are you praying to know God? Because knowing God is the key and you need to not be worrying about, am I going to get my way or am I going to have this what I want? Listen, we want to stay in an attitude of faith. A faith born out of understanding God's love for us awakens something. You can move mountains. The devil is a liar. Goliath will go down. The giant was never sent to defeat you. The giant was sent to promote you. Awaken faith in your hearts today. The enemy waves that shoe in your face. What are you going to do? I would suggest you do what Jesus did when the enemy came to him. Are you ready for this? It is written. You can't declare the word if you are not in the word to know the word to declare in the face of the enemy. I'm going to tell you, reading your Bible is not going to make God love you anymore. And not reading the Bible is not going to make God love you any less. But reading the Word of God will make you a force to be contended with in the earth, and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church that knows what God's Word says when the enemy tries to come their way. And the enemy is there, waving your mistake in your face. Look at what you did. And that's when you respond and you say, it is written. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Verse 34 goes on. Who then is the one who condemns? No, no one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble, will hardship, will persecution, will famine, will nakedness, will danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him, through Jesus, who loved us. Everybody shout, love. Love. He loved us, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, no height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, why don't you give him praise today? Why don't you join me as we just give him praise today? Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. The devil's been lying to you, but nothing can say it is written. Nothing will separate me from God's love. The devil has been lying to you, but the truth today pulls back some layers. Come on, let's all just stand to our feet. A standing ovation for this King of all kings, this Lord of all lords. We lift up the name of Jesus.
fired up. I don't have a lot of voice left for 1130. I'm just going to tell you, God is doing a deep work in your heart and your life. He's dealing with layers, layers of lies that have settled beneath the obvious and they stink and they're awful. And he's pulling back layers to do a deep work. Your mistakes may explain where you have come from, but your mistakes never define where you are going. Since faith works through love, we have to purpose to identify with the person of God rather than the problem we're having. We're driven to a spiritually unhealthy place. Do not let your problems shape your life. Your action point this week is to rehearse 1 John chapter 3. Rehearse it. Take your note card home. Maybe put it on your pillow when you get up to leave so that when you come home, and go to bed, you'll see it the first thing. When you go to bed, put it by your toothbrush so that you get up and you see it the first thing. Rehearse these verses and thank God for His love. Thank God for His grace. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Faith works through love. We are fully known. You're not the least bit put off with us. You love us all the way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, I invite you on this journey to walk with Jesus. It begins with a conversation where we believe in our heart. We confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. And that's the beginning of the most fascinating journey of communication with a loving Father who's constantly trying to draw us into the deeper purposes of God, to awaken the eternal purposes for which we were designed and created. Awaken that within us, I pray, Lord. We acknowledge you're the Savior of the world. You are the Messiah who fulfilled the prophecies of Scripture. You came not to do away with the law, but to complete the law. Not that we wouldn't have an awareness of our sin but that we would become completely aware of the righteousness of God and literally become the righteousness of God. Not just become righteous, become the literal righteousness of God according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your strength. In Jesus' mighty name.